Brand, 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 brand. What is a brand really? There are so many definitions out there, but most of them come from a certain angle. In this video, I wanna walk you through some of the definitions that are out there and point out some things that may be wrong with them, but also to give you a new definition that tries to encompass all of these definitions. So buckle up and let's talk branding. The first question we really need to ask ourselves is, is brand really even a useful concept? Because there are so many definitions and it's so vague, can't we just avoid using the word brand altogether? And I don't think that's possible, actually. A lot of things such as brand strategy, brand building, branding, all come from that concept of brand. So I do think it's important because it's something we all work around. I think it's interesting to at least have an understanding of the different perspectives and try to give somewhat of a complete definition. So I do think it's important. So let's have a look at what's out there. How do people perceive brand? First off, let's just start where every student starts when he's trying to write a paper, Wikipedia. Wikipedia says it's a type of product manufactured by a particular company under a particular name. Interesting. That's like a really practical way of looking at it from the business side. I think it's a very good definition. There's also that second part where it's about the origin of the word brand. And there the definition is an identifying mark Burned. on livestock. And that's usually where like the history of branding and brand come together. This idea of a symbol being burned into the product or service you have. And that, that's an interesting spectrum already from that idea of a symbol or a mark to something bigger than that. Brand today isn't considered just that one thing. For example, here's Les Bennett, a very uh, famous marketing um, researcher, who explains that there are two concepts. The, the word brand as a symbol, a sign, something that's like stamped on, on a product. And then that use has evolved over time into a network of legally protected distinctive assets, name, fonts, colors, logos, and they can be sold and bought independently with the product itself and the factories that make it. So here we can see already there is some evolution in that concept. A brand is no longer just that symbol or that logo. It becomes the whole language around it. But still, these are all definitions that l look at the brand from a business perspective. But there's a lot of definitions out there, especially look if we're looking at the world from branding's perspectives that are a lot more, let's say, consumer-focused. Here's Marty Neumeyer's, a brand is a gut feeling about a product or service. Or here's Paul Lewis's definition, a good friend of mine on LinkedIn. He says it's the meaning and associations people attach to your organization, products and services. And then, of course, there is a lot of definitions about brand being your why. A lot of them coming from that famous idea of Simon Sinek, who, who says you need to start with why and then you have the golden circles. And there, it gets really wishy-washy about what a brand is. So we can see there's no consensus about what a brand is. Sometimes it's very practical, sometimes it's a lot more vague or intangible. Let's try to make sense of all these definitions. Let's put them in a quadrant. So first off, um, from some of the definitions we've heard, I think the main axis will be um, on the left side. We have definitions that are more focused on consumers, that are more focused on associations. On the right side, we have assets. These assets are things that are more company focused, they're more focused on the business. They are things you can own as a company versus things that are happening inside the mind of the consumer. I think that's one of the most important axes. And so on that left side, we can see definitions such as a brand is a gut feeling, a brand is your reputation, a brand is um, the meaning you attach to, to a company or service. These are all things that are leaning towards the consumer side of things. But there is also 
a bottom half of this side of the quadrant because I don't think it's only definitions that focus on like the individual perception of brand. There's also a lot of definitions that talk about brand being this thing that lives in culture. You become a brand once you become part of culture. You're a cultural object. And so here we can see it goes from individual towards cultural where a lot of people say brands are icons such as Apple and Nike and and you become you only can become a brand once you've you've reached enough people and so you it becomes status i mean people only wear stuff because they think other people will like them for it or that sort of thinking that's a very important component of a lot of brand definitions so on the right hand side on the more individual part uh, quadrant we actually have a lot of of the more classical um, definitions. So your brand is your logo, your, a brand is a symbol, a brand is a mark, that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of um, elements living in that spectrum where we say the brand is the brand identity. The brand is the product, the brand is the experience. They try to single out one component that makes up for the whole brand, but they're on the own side, on the business side, because businesses can own these things, right? You mean, I mean, you can own a logo, you can own an identity, but you cannot own a gut feeling or a reputation or status. That's really hard to own. And so that's where, for example, my beef comes in with the left-hand side of this whole qu quadrant, it's hard to own things such as gut feeling and, and meaning and reputation. I mean, you can influence those things. And if you ask a business owner like what a brand is, they usually say, well, well we need to create a new brand for that product or whatever. So they see brand as something else because they're not saying we need to create new gut feelings for, for a new product or service. They, they say we need a logo, we need an identity, we, maybe we need a communication style, that sort of stuff. So that's what a brand is for a lot of people on the business side. And I think that's a good point we really need to realize. If we only talk about gut feelings and, and like associated elements, I think we're leaving a lot on the table that's very important. And so individual assets are very important, of course, um, also known as distinctive brand assets. These are assets a company can own and are very important for uh, a company. Then if we move to the bottom right, we have the cultural assets. Here, what I'm trying to refer to are more um, vaguer um, things such as your tone of voice, maybe your purpose, your brand essence, um, all of these things, because there are a lot of definitions out there that talk about these sort of things where your brand becomes almost your why, your purpose, your reason to exist, or your brand is about your values, that sort of stuff. That's where really all of these definitions live. They're, they are owned by a company because they say what their purpose is or their vision is or maybe how their tone of voice is. So it's it's an asset, but it's a little bit more on the cultural side. And like the, uh, the ultimate version of this is where a brand becomes almost synony synonymous to company culture, where it's about how the people feel in the organization and that becomes your brand. I think all of these quadrants are all very interesting. On the right side, we do have some issues with brands being more than just individual assets. So there is something more than a brand just being logos or typefaces or colors or tone of voices. It's not just a logo. It's the whole experience of that thing that creates a certain promise towards the consumer, so the left-hand side of, of that spectrum, that makes up for a brand. Because when, um, let's say, a big company buys a brand, they're not just, they don't just want to buy the assets like the logo files or whatever you want to call them. They do want to buy that promise that comes with it. As you can see, there's problems on both sides of these spectrums. So I do think we need to merge both concepts. So now it's time for the new definition. A brand is a distinctive experiential promise that represents a business. So I want to break that down real quickly for you. 
So first off, the first word is very important here, distinctive. It has its own character. It's recognizable and different from competitors. This is, of course, already a very important word. If you can't recognize the thing, if it's not distinct, then it's not really a brand. It's very generic. So that's, I think, already very important. But of course, it only becomes distinctive by putting it out there, by making it seen multiple times. But still, you need that character. So distinctiveness, very important. Not to be confused with differentiation, but I'll do no, a whole other video about that. Experiential. It's experienced through visual, auditive, tonal assets that are owned. So that's really important, that word experiential here, because a brand m must be experienced. I think things that are not visually or tonally alive are not really part of the brand. For example, your business strategy is not per se part of your brand. If another company buys a brand, they can just ditch the whole business strategy and implement a new business strategy, but they're buying something else. They're buying the experience. A brand is a distinctive experiential promise. And promise here is very important. A brand is a certain type of guarantee. It's a story. It's a problem to be solved. It's a job to be done. And this is really where we make this, the leap over to the left side of the quadrant. If you remember, we had a lot of talk about these assets, but they do need to be related to that left side, to the consumer side or to the cultural side. And so to promise something, you need to understand the promise will sound promising to the consumer. Also, a promise needs to be repeated over and over again. And mostly the promise really works as a familiarity bonus. The reason why you buy Coca-Cola is it's because you know you'll get the same quality over and over again. You know what you can expect. It's that familiarity of that promise that really makes a brand work and gives a brand equity, which is important, of course. So a brand is a distinctive experiential promise that represents a business. And so that last one is also um, there to, to give it some context, because I think a brand should, the word brand should be used in the relevant context of business, whether that's a personal brand, a nation thinking about its inhabitants or customers, a nonprofit organization wanting more donors, or just a regular business. I think talking about a brand in a like purely cultural, conceptual way makes it become useless and vague. Everything and anything can be a brand but that doesn't really help our disciplines or it doesn't really help when we're trying to convince an organization to build brand. I mean, what does it mean if not in the context of a business? I think that's it for me. That's my definition. And I would encourage you to create your own if you like that, because again, it is contextual. But let's have a discussion about what a brand is. What is it to you? Like, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more videos where I'll be trying to debunk or at least try to nuance some of the concepts and language that are out there when it comes to branding, brand strategy, brand building, all that sort of stuff. That's it. Cheers.